Welcome to Kempo for Advance, Lesson 16. I'm Sensei Roger. And I'm Paul. And today we're going to show you the technique Drums of Manchu, Two-Headed Serpent, and we're going to start or add more to Kempo Set 2. But first, before we do that, let's go over a short disclaimer. Martial arts training may lead to injury or, in rare cases, death. With this knowledge, you assume all responsibility of injury or death from training the contents of this video. Let's get started. Drums of Manchu. This is one of our classic Tracy's karate moves. It gets like two punches. And we're going to do this in the air for a little bit first. We're going to step back with the right. We're going to throw our hand down and our left here. This is where our block is. We're doing a left outward block. Here comes another strike. We'll bring this up outward. Hammer fist. Claw, back fist. This is a cool move. I like the up and down deal. Mm -hmm. That's something we see throughout Kempo. But for me to sit there and do this both ways probably is not going to happen too often. It can, but it's not my first instinct is to have it from here to here. If you're someone's throwing two punches, I'm probably going to go block, block before I get to this. But anyhow, it's a cool move. And here's something I've learned. Just because you don't understand or see the value of the move working in a hole or it's not your favorite movement, don't discredit it. There's a lot of teaching moments in each technique. Down to footwork, down to hour block, downward blocks. So we're doing a downward block here that's kind of there doing nothing. What are we doing with it? Nothing. But we're practicing it. So you gotta look at these techniques with a different light. They're like more like drills, choreographed drills, really. That's all they are. And that gives you the ability to work on different things. Throw a punch, please. Okay, see how I did that. Throw the punch, please. Throw a punch, please. Now from here, I could have dropped that in. Throw that punch, please. See how it went down in here? Okay, but now we'll point it together. One, two. Okay, throw one punch, other punch. Now I claw back this. Let's take her at a different angle, please. All right, throw a punch. That went horribly bad. <laughs> horribly bad. Script gone wrong. Let's do that again. We got you in the back. You ready? Go ahead. Punch one, two. Hammer. See, this is so slow for me to bring this. That's why I say it's not my favorite self-defense move for, per se, something I would do. But I'm working on timing and speed. Okay, now if my hand is down here, throw a punch at me. But now if I'm going from here, I may want to even move out of the way a little bit. Throw a punch. Throw another punch. See, I just kind of moved around. I didn't go right into it like this. I jammed myself up when I did that when it went horribly wrong, didn't I? Let's do that. See how we go down and out? We don't have to come straight in. We can move around here. It's kind of circular and his feet are all over the place. I was stepping into it. <laughs> Alright, so from here on, just move. step back here. Now take this left foot, move it off like this. You're moving forward, but not right into that mm -hmm. punch here. Hammer, claw, back fist. Throws the man too. Let's do that again. Down and out, but now from here, boom. Claw, back fist. See, a lot of times we train this thing going straight forward. But you see the problem with that. We gotta be able to adjust. That's what I told you before. Sometimes you'll see mistakes is what we do things. Sometimes it's on purpose, sometimes it's not. But either way it goes, you're going to know. <laughs> Probably not. But the thing is, even if it was a mistake that actually happened and I caught it, and you go, oh man, that's not going to be good. Here's what I want everyone to really do when you look at your techniques. Have certain basics you want to get down. Right, from here, throw a punch. Don't have your chin up and be so relaxed like this. One basic is throw a punch. 
I'm not looking to not get hit every time when I'm doing a technique. I know that sounds stupid, but if I'm looking to not get hit ever, and then when I get hit, I'm surprised. Oh my God, I got hit. And that might end the day. But if I'm looking to just not get hurt, it's a difference. Part of what they're confident. It's a difference. If you protect yourself with certain things, if I'm coming back here, I don't want my head up like this. I want my chin down. Here. I may have to go in here to here. See, I'm shifting my body just because we can go like, here's the technique. Mm -hmm. looks pretty in the air. But when we seen it go into action, it really wasn't that practical that way. So from here, I might have to do this throw a punch at me. I'm here, not throw another punch. I'm here, whoa. I might have to get out of the way, but my hand might come into there. But that leads me to some other stuff too. Look for a technique to go wrong. And then this will open the door for different things. Throw the punches at me. I just changed the whole move. I didn't feel comfortable where I was, so I just mm -hmm. did that. I moved my head away from that punch, and then I just came in with it. Look for it to go wrong. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. It's a cool move. I like it. But when it comes down to it, it's not my instinctive technique to do. And that's okay. You don't have to have every technique to be your instinct to do. It's not going to be reality if you say that it, that's going to happen. I'm great at all the moves. No, no, I know all the moves in the Tracy system. Am I great at all of them to actually try to perform? No. Am I better than a lot of other people? Maybe. Some people better than me? Yeah, probably. That's just reality. We practice the moves and look around and see what you can take out of it. What are you picking up? What are you practicing? Instead of us always being like this, in a horse stance, now we're doing here. Look. Oh, that's the same thing, isn't it, almost? I like, I, I mean, this would be slow, the response time, but I do like the fact of just stepping back out of the way. Yeah. Because I have to actually charge on that, so I'll try to throw two punches in there. Oh. That second punch, I'm, I'm myself, yeah. if I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going off balance because I have to leap forward to try it, because you're already out of the way. Yeah. So... Like you guys seen us do the techniques here before, we go in the net. It's the same teachings we're kind of doing here, but instead of going in first, we're coming up like this. Now we can come into here. Okay, but now with that said, throw a punch, throw another punch. Okay, now you see how we can take our tempo and piece it together. Now that became a pretty awesome technique now. That would be my instinct is there, throw a punch. He just punched my arm and I hammer fist him. But yeah, <laughs> see I can go in here, just because it says do this doesn't mean I can't mm -hmm. do a cover block on there. What is a cover block? I'm glad you asked. Throw a punch. Cover block is where I'm just kind of starting to move it out of the way, but then my main block comes in. That's what a cover block is. Just like a brush block or right. throw a punch. I, I'm there, boom, I tap it, I'm up in here. That's your cover block. Can we do this and then turn that into a cover block before a hammer fist? Of course. And that's what I'm trying to say with Kempo for advance. We don't always have to look the prettiest, but what we want to do is be able to perform something to we're not getting knocked out, just practicing moves and we're going like this and then when someone actually goes to hit us, or we're sparring, mm -hmm. and that's the difference. Sparring helped me a lot. It also hurt me a lot when I did point fighting. <laughs> because then I started picking up bad habits with point fighting. But sparring really does help you understand distances. I'm here and here. I know where I need to be to hit you. I know where I need to get out of the way to, or else I get hit. It's happened many times. All right, let's go to the next move, two-headed serpent. This was a review technique from the last series. Someone's got some two-headed choke here. All right, now from here, Paul is choking like Frankenstein. <laughs> well, let's <laughs> go that's back for a moment. <laughs> that's gonna work. <laughs> 
Okay. You see how? <laughs> you want to draw you in close or a hug? <laughs> I mean, thing is, Paul's not used to choking people for real. But well, you were gonna try to, too, but we don't want to talk about those people. They're not here yeah. anymore. Shh. Yeah, shh. Yeah. All right, go ahead, choke at me. Right, yeah, this one, boom. I want you to really squeeze it. Okay. One thing I can do, squeeze hard. Turn the chin. Boom. I hit you, face, body. Now, at this point here, his hands come off of me. This is where I clear it. Grab it again. From here, boom. Clear, poke the eye, there's a punch to the body. All right, let's do this in the air. We'll move forward, then you punch. Get the hands ready, they're choking. First thing I like to do is shrug my shoulders and draw my chin. They're still choking you, but it reduces a little bit because the muscles starting to tighten up. Mm -hmm. It's going to give me just a little more time than if I'm standing and go, oh no. Well, they're also going to be able to, they, if they push you back, they got all control yeah. up. Your head's going back. Exactly. I'm shrugging here. It gives me a little more, you know, we're not squeezing and destroying everything right away. It gives me a little more chance to protect. So I'm here now, I move forward. Double punch like this. Side in, out. There's the poke. There's the punch. Good. Here's what would, in Shotokan they call it a mountain punch. Which we do this because Kebo has Shotokan roots. We just lost a lot of that as time went on and got changed more towards the Chinese. But here's the thing, when you're coming into it, I don't want to really lean that much because choke me. It didn't work. That, that didn't work. Now here at this point, he's got to hold me, squeeze me. I just punched him right that's, forward. That's okay. <laughs> <clears throat> but here's the thing is, I can't really move that far forward, can I? You got me. What am I doing? Keep going. If you were, well, could you use that same move maybe to clear a little bit first and then snap a second there? So if I'm tight, could you just back me off a little bit and then really I come can in? hit you, then move forward with that hit and then mm -hmm. push with it even, or I could just go bang. I don't want to just stand here and go here. I move mm -hmm. balance. Right. Even if you put the foot slightly forward, you don't have to go in here. They're on close. Think about it. I got to hold you. Good. Step in and hit me. Okay, now from here, step deep in and hit me. It's like I still got to hold you. You can't really step deep in. No, you're step. pushing back now. Yeah. Now I can run and drive you backwards. So what if, uh, okay, so we'll bring it out. When up. you drop your chin down, the mm -hmm. shoulders go up a little bit. That helps you have a little more push forward and not get pushed back when you're trying to go forward. It gives a little more resistance to that. If they're already pushing you backwards, would it benefit you to actually take a step backwards. and let them take and then to clear space for the stroke? Yeah. I mean, you go always do it backwards. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. The technique show we move forward, but can we go backwards? Great question. Okay, here, choke me. I'm right here now, look. You got. When you're choking and you want to move me, your arms aren't going to be really extended, mm. right? You're going to be like this. Right. You're really trying to yeah, yeah, yeah. push me too, right? Grab a hold of me. Down here. Boom. Right there. Look at that. Yeah. And there's your two-headed serpent. Let's do this slow. We're going to drop the chin, shoving the shoulders. You can lean a little bit too. So you got to hold you. You're not getting shoved back like this. Mm. You can still walk back even. But we're going to just, for the sake of practicing the technique itself, we're going to move forward. I give you that other stuff as ideas, is not to be stuck just on the thinking of this technique is the greatest technique in the world. This technique is going to work. Mm -hmm. This is why I say technique on technique. Is when we take the technique and then break it apart. But what is the teaching we have here? Bow stance. But we don't have to go into full bow stance for the technique. Here's a U punch, double punch. See, that's one thing we're working. We're also working side step, in, out, poke, punch, which we have a technique is just that. 
and say, okay, if you look at the system long enough, if you're in something long enough, you'll start getting the understanding on what's going on. Some of the moves I really used to think was just stupid, now I'm really starting to see value to it. I did it anyhow because this is what I do. I teach it because it's part of the system that I joined. I joined into an organization, I'm teaching what I was told to teach, and I went to that. And then as I taught it for so many years, I realized there's a lot of value to it. It worked! For the guys that people, think about this, everyone wants to immortalize Bruce Lee or Ed Parker, a lot of people really look up to Ed Parker to a certain point, you know, the thing is, he did the same moves that we're doing. Now when you get to the American couple, he took out some of me, he was always evolving and changing until he got to where he was at, the American couple. The Tracy system is before he evolved to that. So people don't understand that. They want to say, you know, the Kempo guys always want to fight against each other, and I don't understand that. We all come from the same roots. Why would we fight? Embrace each other's changes. Share them with each other. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I'm getting at. All right, let me do this Kempo set two, and then we'll be finished up out of here. Kempo set two, we're going to take it up to the point of drums of man two. Here's the part from the last video. Ring of fire. Okay, then we're going to go to this corner. The right foot steps back. We're going to the left corner. Drums of Manchu. Then we're going to look over to the next one as we come back. Drums of Manchu. Okay, let's go back over to for the backbreaker, or backbreaker here, and then I just I just messed up which direction I was going, didn't I? All right, let me take it over again. Come from here, okay, boom. Now backbreaker this side. Okay, now here we are, go right into the ring of fire, block, uppercut, step one, cross, the back fist, the claw, the hammer fist. Lock it in, uppercut, come across, step, back fist, claw, hammer fist, look, step back, down out, out hammer, claw, back fist. Oh, hey, how you doing over here? Oh, not that side, right? Now we go this side. Claw, back fist. There's your drums of Manchu. Alright, I hope I didn't make it too sloppy for you guys today. Just having fun with it. Hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Subscribe. Yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks. God, God bless. bless.